Good morning, everyone. We're going to be looking at tectonic hazards today. First, the question. Suggest why the effects of a tectonic hazard vary between areas of contrasting wealth. Six marks. So, suggest why the effects of a tectonic hazard vary between areas of contrasting wealth. Six marker. Again, remember to highlight the key terms. So, for example, here, the effects or the word effects should be highlighted in the exam tectonic hazard should be highlighted, as well as probably areas of contrasting wealth. And that way you can write some bullet points down of some examples that you remember or are aware of, and then you can move on to writing the answer in well-structured paragraphs. Before you even do that, you, as you are revising, you can write down this table. On the left-hand side, you can write down an example of a place that you've studied and you can write down the tectonic hazard, write down the effects of those specific places, bullet point them, make sure you give some data to evidence the amount of damage that happened. It could be monetary, it could be uh, the scale of losses, i.e. the number of people that have died or have been injured or are long-term homeless or have had to be um, moved from one place to another. And then on the far right hand side, write down some um, whether they were less or more impacted. So this is slightly different. So for a higher income country, you can write down the reasons why the loss in terms of economic loss was quite high. But the recovery time was pretty quick. And the reason for that may have been uh, X or Y, wherever the reasons are. And then do the same thing for a less developed country, so a lower income country. Make sure that you identify why uh, they were not able to protect as many of their own citizens. Let's have a look at some sample answers. The effects of tectonic hazards vary between areas of contrasting wealth, as areas with more wealth can prepare and repair much more easily to poorer areas. So the candidate has already identified that wealth is a significant factor in why there are differences in uh, managing the effects of a tectonic hazard, which is absolutely correct to say. The situation at the, situa the Sichuan earthquake in China and NEE caused extensive damage with thousands of buildings being destroyed and debris killing thousands more. This is because the technology to predict an earthquake, such as seismographs, was not in place and buildings were not reinforced or stabilised. So here the candidate has identified an absolutely accurate case study example and has qualified it by saying it's an NEE, a newly emerging economy, and has then suggested the uh, damage or the effects that have been caused by it. Even better here would have been to actually talk about some numbers of how many people died because it would just qualify the fact that uh, in this country the um, the damage was very very high in comparison to another this is because the technology to predict an earthquake such as seismograph was not in place so then it qualifies it by saying here's a reason why this this management strategy this planning and preparation was not being in advance uh, not being done in advance as well as the buildings not being reinforced, which is leading to uh, so many people dying as a consequence. So a very good paragraph overall. Next. However, in Chile 2015, only 500 people died as the country was able to have the infrastructure in place to prevent too many broken buildings and to make repairs to Route 5 North-South Highway within 24 hours, allowing aid to arrive and lives be saved. So again, the candidates identified that there are significantly less people who were killed in the earthquake itself. Although probably could have talked about infrastructure and what was done to that infrastructure in a bit more detail. For example, reinforced steel, um, deeper foundations being put in place, maybe evacuation drills being rehearsed by the population. Although uh, it recovers by saying that they were able to quickly rebuild um, and they allowed aid to come into their country. So overall, 
uh, this in in the GCSE exam would get a top band mark for uh, for their answer. In Bichuan City, the earthquake had hugely significant effects. For example, the earthquake killed thousands of people and nearly 10,000 people were injured. Specifically in Yingzhou. Overall, over the half the town's population was killed, thus creating huge social train, strain and impact upon the area. Moreover, thousands of buildings were destroyed and thus people lost their livelihoods and 10,000 people were left homeless. Okay, so in this paragraph, the candidate has talked about a specific example from the China earthquake and is given very very high levels of detail for the uh, the effects of the the earthquake itself. In this paragraph, however, um, the Canada has not really talked about why uh, the the effects were so large. So that's kind of missing from this paragraph, which is a quite a key component of what the question is asking for. Now, if that had been put in uh, an ending sentence, for example, then potentially this could be a significantly, um, a significantly more stronger paragraph because already it's quite strong because of the uh, the detail gone in, but it hasn't gone back to answer the question at the end of it. Conversely, in Chile, at HIC, only 500 people were killed by an earthquake in February 2010. Moreover, 100,000 homes were destroyed. However, these effects were largely negated because of Chile's swift and efficient response. For example, for instance, a national appeal raised $60 million, which afforded 30,000 emergency shelters, emergency services, acted swiftly, and Chile's strong economy based on copper exports aided quickly, quick economic recovery locally and nationally. So here the candidate again has chosen a appropriate and relevant example, has given some specific effects in data which are correct. But then the reason, and then it goes on to explaining why they were less impacted and it gives a number of key reasons for, for that. So this is a good example of a paragraph that's been well structured, got plenty of detail and is answering what the question is asking. It finishes off by saying, overall, the effects of tectonic hazards vary between areas of contrasting levels of wealth because of different responses to the country, with the HIC being more able to recover swiftly and efficiently due to its economy and imposed measures. Although the conclusion is not necessary in a six mark question, that the points that have been made here are entirely relevant. Next answer. In in area of low wealth, such as China, the effects of tectonic hazards will be much worse because of the lower infrastructure and the lack of specifically designed buildings. For example, in Bechuan City, 70% of the buildings were destroyed, nearly 10,000 people injured. Compared to a high level of wealth in Nepal, only 500 people died and 2,000 people were injured. This is because of the better infrastructure, better emergency services, and being more prepared. So let's have a look at the first paragraph here. In an area of lower wealth, such as China, um, that's a very vague statement to make, and it shows that the candidate doesn't understand that China is a newly emerging uh, economy, and perhaps even moving up into a higher income uh, economy. The effects of technologic hazards have been much worse due, because of their lower level of infrastructure and lack of specifically designed buildings. So the uh, candidate sort of understands that buildings and how buildings are built is important, but hasn't actually identified what they are doing to those buildings or even explaining what lower level infrastructure actually means. So it gives some accurate data about Bechuan City, 70% of the buildings were destroyed and lots of people were injured and killed. But it's also inaccurate to say that Nepal, uh, so this seems like the candidate has mixed up their case study with uh, Chile. 
um, and Nepal certainly isn't a more economically developed country than China. It is less, it's definitely in a lower income country in comparison to China. So consequently, the, the quality of the answer here is actually quite poor because it shows or demonstrates that the candidate doesn't understand the key case studies and has mixed up uh, information between uh, all of them. So this would be a example of a low level answer. Let's have a look at the next answer here. In poorer areas, deaths as well as buildings can be much higher as well as devastating. So immediately the candidate has said that deaths can be high, that's only correct, but I'm not sure what the candidate means by buildings can be much more higher. I think what they're trying to say is that there are a lot there is a lot more devastation of those buildings. In China, thousands were killed, as well as water, food, and, sanita and sanitation damage being severe. So uh, a very broad statement to make, which you could apply to any case, any case study, really, or any earthquake or volcanic eruption. These effects were much more severe due to poor building construction, planning, economic strength, and more. In Chile, the earthquake only killed 500 people, and despite the high economic cost of $30 billion, the effects were less severe due to the wealth from copper exports. This allowed them to recover power and water for 90% within 10 days, something an area like China couldn't do. Uh, doesn't explain why China couldn't do it, but some relatively accurate data about Ch uh, Chile and their recovery. Therefore, effects of tectonic hazards greatly vary due to wealth. So that's an accurate statement to make. So it's a, a, a relatively poor introduction, some good information about Chile, not enough information about China at all. So probably it will be low band to mid band answer, uh, a low mid band answer. So maybe three out of six max uh, for this answer overall. So now it's your turn to, to go away and master your writing skills. Make sure you've written down today's question um, and then use the table that I showed you earlier to write out some notes because it will help you to structure your thoughts as well as give you the revision that you need at this time. And then come and do the question. Try and do the question within six minutes. If you need to use the uh, table that you've created to write your answer, that's, of course, perfectly fine to do. Uh, make sure that you do that because it will help you to revise and uh, re-embed that knowledge further. Remember to keep on writing and doing exam practice questions. If you haven't done the bonds from the previous sessions, there are plenty on the channel. So please make sure that you have taken the time to do that. Uh, the more writing that you do, the more practice that you do, the better you'll get. And when you go into the exam and you see an exam question, you will have the good habits to be able to absolutely uh, get the uh, answer spot on every time. Uh, if there aren't any questions, I'll give you guys a 30 seconds to a minute. You can ask me a question if you want. If, you, if you've got a specific request for a uh, live stream, a video that you'd like me to cover, then let me know in the chat. Um, Otherwise, you can always leave a comment in the comment section on the YouTube video uh, at the end too. There will be another session tomorrow, which I'll upload uh, the uh, handle for on uh, YouTube very shortly. Okay, everyone, have a nice day.